everybody, welcome back to Bear Ready Terrible. Today we have another fight called the Ocean Eye featuring our Empoleon V from Battle Styles with the Empress Eye ability, shutting down all of your opponent's basic Pokemon's ability if they have no rule box on them. So Manaphy actually cannot protect their bench from damage. We are playing our Matchless Maelstrom for this deck. Three copies of this scroll of Swirls to help us do Matchless Maelstrom for 30 damage to all of our opponent's Pokemon, plus 30 more to their bench V cards if we have Parsimian in play. We also have one copy of Mimikyu to block them from healing on the bench if they play Crystal Cave or Milotic or Celebi V Max, anything that heals their bench Pokemons, all of their Pokemon at the same time, like Freshwater as well, they can't actually heal their bench Pokemon. So that actually helps us pile up enough damage counters with our Matchless Maelstrom using Empoleon to hit the bench and then collect the knockout with Basculin later on. If they're playing a lot of support Pokemons like Fluffy, Chinchino, Cherim, Drizzle, or even Crobat V, Luminion V, Eldegoss V, and Cricutune, we can actually kill them quite easily, collect a few extra prizes with our Matchless Maelstrom for only two or three strikes, killing all of those Pokemon at the same time. So obviously you need three strikes to kill a Crobat, also three for Fluffy actually, but killing those support Pokemon is actually a big deal because we are removing those abilities from play. That means they don't get to use Dynamotor, they can't use Spring Bloom ability, they can't use Make Do anymore. And if we hit any of their other bench V cards like Arceus, anything else, we can actually collect the knockout with our Basket and Swarm the Wound for 10 plus damage for each damage counter on that Pokemon, plus 30 base damage as well. So that means we just need 15 damage counters on their VMAX Pokemon to kill it off with one strike using our Basket. In some cases, though, it may be wiser to do your Swirling Slice for 130 damage using our Empoleon to target their V cards if they are playing nothing but V Pokemon like V. Star V Maxes, you can actually do Swirling Slice and then Quick Shoot for that extra few damage counters before collecting the knockout with your Basculin. Swarm the Wound for 180 damage if they have 13 plus that 2 damage counters with your Quick Shoot. So we're playing 2 copies of Sobble and Driza for the ability support, 2 copies of Octillery and Remoraid as well for Rapid Strike Search to allow us to search for basically any card we want for this deck just because we are playing so many Rapid Strike cards. Tool Card, Special Energy, Tower of Waters, and also our Evolution, except for Driza just because this card is actually not a Rapid Strike Pokemon. The only card that is not Rapid Strike is Mimikyu and sadly our Shady dealings, but we do have our evolution incense and ultra balls to get those cards out. So for our setup cards, we have four VIP pass and four quick balls for the basic summon. For our supporter cards, we have two Marnie, two Karina's focus, two research, one school girl, and one bird keeper for the draw. We also have three Melanies for Empoleon to attack fast, one escape rope, two tower of waters, and one bird keeper for the switch, and one copy of our power support boss order. So another important thing to note is that you can actually attach this tool card to any of your rapid strike Pokemon to do matchless maelstrom as long as they don't have mana in play. If they have a mana make sure you attach that tool card to Empoleon because you can't actually hit their bench without the Empress Eye ability, which only activates if Empoleon is in the active spot. So that's all for the deck review, let's go ahead for gameplay! Okay, let's go ahead for our first game versus a Charizard deck. Uh, they're playing a Charizard 1 prize. So no V-Star. Um, the V-Star, I would say, is very expensive though, just because it's like the newest... I'm not sure if it costs more than Arceus, but... It's not really too strong as well, only does 230 damage for 3 energies. Uh, Magma Basin helps you attach energy fast, but I don't really see any... I don't really like that card. It's not too strong if you ask me. You get to play a Heat Energy, Big Charm to boost the HP, but I really prefer other other V-Stars. Even a Whimsicott I would say is better than Charizard. Uh, just because Water Types are so hyped now. So Water Type with Melanie, you can actually kill it off with 1 Strike. Even a silly Rapid Strike Inteleon, a Rapid Strike Inteleon VMAX can kill it with one strike. KO a Charizard V Star with uh I forgot the attack though. Um Max Gunner? It's not Max Gunner. Max something. Uh it does 140 damage, right? For uh if you put a water energy back into your hand. You get to do, or a Rapid Strike Energy back to your hand, you get to do 70 more damage. So 70 plus 70 is 140. Uh, multiply by 2, that's enough to kill off the V Star. Unless if they have a Heat Energy. But if they have the Heat Energy, you got your Double Gunner to snipe them on the bench. So Tornadus actually helps you uh, do the Whirlpool Suction effect, pushing their active to the bench, and then do Double Gunner to place extra damage counters to kill off the Charizard if they do have those tool card and special energy to boost their HP. So Intellion is like the perfect combo, uh, the perfect matchup against the V-Star, just because it does uh, those tiny extra damage counters. So that's the power of Rapid Strike, I suppose. Rapid Strike has a Basculin now, so Basculin uh, for Fusion Strike though, it's not really too new. So it's quite old. Uh, it's actually last set, not too old though. But Basculin is a huge boost, is a huge upgrade to your Rapid Strike team because it does so much. All you need is uh, Urshifu Basculin, really. Urshifu Basculin is going to do so much. 
Um, if they have Menifee though, that's why Menifee is that powerful. That's why I don't play Urshifu Baskerin for this. I prefer Empoleon and the Scroll to guarantee those bench snipes. Because Menifee is so common now. Menifee, you cannot afford to not play that bench, uh, bench barrier. Because your opponent is definitely going to play Urshifu. is quite likely going to play those uh, bench snipe cards like Jolteon VMAX as well. Those cards are quite powerful. And if you are up against those... If you are fighting against those decks without your bench protection, you don't really stand a good chance. You don't stand any chance of winning, really. Just because they are that fast and powerful. So we actually don't have a meta fee for this list, um, surprisingly. I prefer to opt for speed rather than um, consistency. Uh, so it seems. It's actually quite consistent though, except for the bench protection. If they kill somehow uh, two Pokemon, two of your support Pokemon with Urshifu, I don't think we can survive for this for this deck. So Urshifu is going to kill off like uh, Octillery and your Inteleon on the bench uh, before it evolves. So your Drizzle can actually transform into Quick Shoot on the next turn, which is going to help you a lot. So make sure you evolve it fast. If you can evolve your Drizzle early on, make sure you do that because it's can't. the Quick Shoot is going to help you a lot if you can pull it out early. And if they kill it before you get to evolve, before you get to use that ability, if you don't get to use that, it's going to destroy you really because we may actually be required to rely on that ability just because we're doing so little damage with our... Matchless Maelstrom, Swirling Slice doesn't do enough either, so we need that Inteleon like crazy. It's actually better to fit in two copies, but I only have one copy for this list. I don't really find, I can't really find any more space for it. So one Inteleon for the Quick Shoot, and three of the tool cards plus two Drizzle, Sobble, and Octillery. Two Baskerin just because it's that good. So you may actually decide to... It may be recommended to swap one basket in for an extra copy of your Inteleon. It may be more useful that way just because Baskelin doesn't actually do much early on. Um, if you pull it out early, it's not going to help you. You're probably going to boss kill it off anyways. So it may be wiser just to bench it late at the last minute when you pull out your Tower of Waters. And then switch retreat, uh, sorry, retreat or bird keeper if they kill off your stadium card. You can actually do escape rope or bird keeper. Attach a rapid strike energy with your artillery, and then you're good to go for swarm the wound. If you escape rope though, you're gonna have to do a boss because the active is gonna be put back onto the bench. So we actually get to kill Charmander, um, because they didn't evolve. They actually passed the turn not evolving both the Charmanders. And we got 3 damage counters on 30 damage on all of the bench supports now. Um, this ability support. And we got like 60 damage passing the turn. That means we got like 2 more strikes to go to kill off all 3 of the uh, ability supports for extra prizes. So that means we just need to kill off 2 Charmanders, which we are doing this turn. So they did Magma Basin to help us uh, 30 damage to the active because it's weak towards water type. And we drew our first two prize. They are down to zero basic Pokemon on the bench, zero basic attacker. And that's going to delay them by a whole turn, which is going to help us do an extra strike with this Empoleon, which is going to be super bad for them. So they're rotting back the Menifee probably. No Menifee, okay. They're putting back the Charmander because they desperately need to bench at least two copies because if we pull a bet. If we pull out a Drizzle on the next turn and incense anything to get the boss, we can actually kill off one of the Charmander. So I think it's better just to do Matchless Maelstrom though. I think that would be like the best bet. So don't be baited by uh, quick and easy knockouts. It's better to do uh, you know slow knockouts and go for the long haul if you're playing a bench snipe deck. If you're playing Rapid Strike, it's better to opt for long haul and play the long game rather than do easy quick knockouts because that's what single strike is for rapid strike is for like slow and steady and basically collect multi-prize right it's all about multi-prize 
So Quick Ball, Ultra Ball to discard a billion. And then draw, draw, draw with Rebarrel. I would discard something else though. Uh, discard the energy. I would discard the energy really. And then draw with the first Rebarrel before using my Ultra Ball. Because they actually discarded Ultra Ball with the Quick Ball. But they are playing so many item cards though. I suppose they are playing like a thousand item cards. Um, if they get the rare candy though, they can't actually discard, right? So discarding the choice belt is not good. They actually got another Menifee. So they got two copies of that bench protection. So we still get to hit it. You'll see later that we still get to hit the bench just because Emperor's Eye goes through Water Veil. So it goes through any basic Pokemon's ability as long as they don't have a, a rule box on it. So if they have any rule box, so Crobat, um... Elder Goss, Cricketune, all the V cards, they still get to use those abilities. But if they play Mew or Jirachi, Amazing Jirachi, anything that requires any One Piece cards that have ability that are basic Pokemons, they have no ability just because Emperor's Eye works that well. If they play Escape Rope Boss though, they can still use their ability. Kind of the same as Weezing. It only works in your active spot. So just because we are attacking with Empoleon, we get to hit it, hit the bench for 30 damage. With Matchless Maelstrom, uh, passing through Manaphy's water availability. It would have been smarter. It would actually have been smarter for us to quick shoot the Manaphy just because we attached our tool card to the Remorade. So I forgot to keep the tool card for our Empoleon uh, for this game. I actually forgot. We fortunately have our last copy of the tool card inside the deck, not in the prize card. So that means we get to do our Melanie on the next turn. If they don't Marnie us, that's going to be really clear cut for us is gonna be so easy all we need to do is um auxiliary for a tower of waters we don't even need it just because we have that one energy retreat we can even retreat with that basculin if we want to so uh retreat melanie is gonna give us that extra one energy and then search for that tool card we actually need to use auxiliary for the tool card my bad and then collect all four prize cards we even got to quick shoot so we're going to quick shoot the Menifee for an extra prize. We should have done the quick shoot on the last turn, uh, but we were a bit too caught up. We took the bait, really. They were baiting us with that Magma Basin. Uh, that two damage conjures on the Charmander means we can actually collect an extra prize if we early, if we quick shoot the Charmander. But we should have done the Menifee for sure. Because we would have gotten four prize this turn. If we did it on the last and we would have attacked we would have been able to attack with remorade we can actually use remorade for matchless maelstrom if they don't have if we kill the mana fee on our turn because they can't actually bench another one if we kill it with damage counters on our turn and they just considered because they knew we could do our matchless maelstrom our fourth time our fourth strike killing off all the bench sports uh, the mana fee is dead with our quick shoot, we get to target and uh, draw an extra prize with the Menifee knockout. And then we get to kill off the Oranguru Bibarel, double Bibarel knockout for the three remaining prizes. So now we're up against a psychic deck, a ghost psychic type. Fairy. So it's no longer poison, now it's fairy. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Dark type is now poison and. It's only dark and poison, it's nothing else. Um, water, ice, grass, bug, fire is just fire, lightning is just lightning, metal is just metal, colorless is flying. What other types are there? Uh, dragon is just dragon. I don't think there's any other types. Um, I don't know why they're giving me the O face. I'm just gonna give the old face back. <laughs> I suppose we did nothing. They could quite easily kill us off with Melodious Echo. If they do Elisa, attach energy from the hand, switch. They can kill the Sobble quite easily. But they attach double turbo to the Mew. That means they can't attack this turn. If they do the Psychic Leap, if they do Elisa to the Mew, they can still do Psychic Leap, but it's not enough to kill the Sobble. Psychic Leap does 50 damage. With the double turbo. So thank god, Sobble staying alive is a big deal. Just because um, 
it gets to evolve on the next turn and it gets to pull out your Inteleon a bit faster as I said Inteleon early uh, early entrance for your Inteleon is gonna help you a lot because it's gonna count to the timing and timing is everything for this game especially if you're playing a rapid strike deck timing is everything so they got Elisa they can't attack just yet because Mew the V card the basically one actually requires a psychic a specific type energy for the attack cost but Rico Rio can actually do the attack as well so Elisa for Rico Rio to do um, I forgot the attack but something droplets glistening droplets place five damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like so you get to place five damage counters in any way which is quite cool Um, Orikuri is going to be quite difficult to get past, so we can actually uh, avoid the ability. That means we get to do Passimian for 60 damage on the Genesect and 60 damage on the Mew V if they bench another one. Uh, if we have that Passimian on our bench, we can actually uh, do our Matchless Maelstrom for 60 damage and 30 damage to the Orikuri. That means the ability has no effect. Right? They can't actually reduce damage done to their Fusion Strike Pokemon just because Emperor's Eye is going to block off that ability. So we're going to get Empoleon, um, Retreat, and hit it fast. I don't think that's too smart though. I'm not sure what the best route is right now. Uh, we should be doing Swirling Slice if we can. We can Retreat Melanie and do Swirling Slice right now. I think that's our best bet. Swirling Slice to the Basculin, I suppose. And then somehow pull out another Empoleon for... Uh, I think we should be doing something before the Basculin. Because 130 is not enough. We need to either... Uh, We need to either get our, in, uh, what's it called, Inteleon. So we have to evolve the Drizzle this turn if we want to do Snipe on the next turn. So Snipe is going to give us a Mew knockout. I don't think so though, because Basculin, uh, Orikoviu is going to re reduce damage counters. Uh, 180 minus 20 is still enough, right? 160 damage is all we need to kill the Mew VMAX. So 130 right now, just because Orikoviu has no ability as long as Empoleon is in the active spot but once it's out of the active spot if you're attacking with any other cards Orico Rio still get to reduce the damage done to their Mew to their any of their rapid fusions right Pokemon my bad so we're gonna do Swirling Slice to one of the two Basculins on the bench we're just gonna save our Rapid Strike energy if they play Fan of Waves though it's gonna be super bad so always be prepared for that pesky item card I think we may just transfer our basic energy. Oh, we chose our special energy, apparently. So quite easily gonna evolve. Um, they just need a choice belt or even a power tablet. I mean, they don't need much. 190 plus 30 damage is 220. We don't have a cape. We're meant to be attaching the other tool card. We're meant to be using Matchless Maelstrom with the scroll. So we can't afford to play two different uh, tool cards in a single deck unless if we want to sacrifice some other cards. I don't really want to sacrifice other copies. I prefer to have nothing but the scroll. Um, you can actually play a very versatile deck, you know, uh, kind of a toolbox deck by playing different tool cards, uh, you know, just to help your Empoleon survive a bit longer. And maybe a shopping center if you want to... If you play a shopping center, though, it's going to die, right? If you retrieve your Cape of Toughness, Empoleon is going to die. It's going to die before you get to do the Matchless Maelstrom. So you can't actually afford to swap the tool cards. You actually have to attach a second tool card to the same Pokemon if you want to do your Matchless Maelstrom with the HP boost. So it's impossible to do two at the same time. Um... But I don't think it's necessary. So this is testing our Empoleon against a VMAX deck. It's actually not too strong against VMAX or VSTAR to be honest, but 
uh, if they play one price, you have a strong chance of winning. If they play one price supports as well, if they play like a V Star with a uh, Barrel or a V Star with a Lipard, a V Max with a uh, Chinchino, anything that requires Flaffy or any one price support is going to help you a lot because you actually get to collect the knockout with your Basklin on the V Max later on. After doing Matchless Millstrom a few times to kill off all the bench supports, killing off all the baby supports actually help you collect extra prizes and then. At the last minute, at the final countdown, all you need to do is kill off a VMAX with those uh, ADBD damage counters after piling up enough damage counters on the VMAX with enough uh, damage with enough times of your enough strikes of your matchless maelstrom. After doing enough times, uh, after attacking with your Empoleon, damaging all of their Pokemon, 30 damage to all of their Pokemon, you just need to boss or anyone that has a lot of damage on it to do your Swarm the Wound for a VMAX knockout, collecting the last 3 prize or the last 2 prize or something like that. So Basklin is a huge addition to your Rapid Strike team, definitely. So now we need to do our Matchless Maelstrom. It's smarter to do that as early as we can. We're gonna get our Passimian. We get to search for the tool card with our Drizzile. So we already did our Rapid Strike Octillery, we did the ability for Octillery, now we have to Shady Dealings for a Toll card if we want to play our Matchless Maelstrom. And unfortunately, we actually decided to retreat to discard our... which is a bit sad. Because we're removing a Rapid Strike Energy from Basculin which could be the wrong move, I don't know. But we can't even do the knockout this turn. So we evolved too late though. We should have evolved our Drizzle on the last turn and got our Inteleon this turn. That way we could have done a new VMAX knockout. So that was the mistake, I suppose. But if we do our Matchless Maelstrom, we could, be, we could possibly save ourselves. We just need to retreat right now. Sacrifice Empoleon on the next turn, which is fine. We're down to two prize cards on our opponent's hand, but I don't think it's too bad. We just need to kill the Mew VMAX on the next turn and somehow attack. Uh, we can actually do Matchless Maelstrom with Basculin, but you want it, you actually want to be saving your Basculin for a one hit knockout because it can actually kill uh, the Mew quite easily. So if you can save it, make sure you rescue. Uh, save it on the bench, don't have it killed off too easily. Or at least force your opponent to waste a boss. Because that card is precious against a V a, a V deck. We are playing a V Max V Star. No V Star, just a V Max, my bad. Okay, they actually got Fusion Strike Energy on all Oh Fusion Strike Energy though. We can't actually hit the Genesec, but we can hit the Mew just because it has a double turbo. So if we had Inteleon, we can still do the knockout with Quick Shoot and Swarm the Wound. So we can't Quick Shoot the Genesec because of the ability block. Fusion Strike Energy blocks off all abilities. So that's a bit annoying because Zigzagoon doesn't work, Inteleon doesn't work, Clefable doesn't work. So many things doesn't work. You can't be poisoned by abilities, you can't be... Uh, you can't do anything with abilities. So finally we get to uh, we finally get to kill off the Mew VMAX. They need one more turn to charge up the second Mew to attack with it. Unless if they are smart enough to attack with the Meloetta, I think the smarter strategy would be to go for the Meloetta for Melody's Echo because it can actually do a decent amount of damage. They actually have all four Fusion Strike energies in play already. So they can do a, a base 280 damage with Melodious Echo. We got a Rep Strike Energy, that's great. So now we just need to fingers crossed they need a few extra turns to set up their next attacker. If they get the energy, all they need is one energy for Meloetta. If they are smart enough to use Meloetta, we're done. Because they got two prize remaining. They just attached to Mew, so we got one turn left. They actually gave us one entire turn, which is a luxury, I would say. 
definitely should have killed us with Meloetta. Right? Meloetta first, and then double turbo on the Mew later. I don't think they have any other energy, though. They may have nothing but double turbo and infusions, right? Um, in which case, I suppose they're afraid of wasting those copies. They may have uh, one or two copies prized. Uh, maybe only three double turbo and four fusion strike. I'm not sure. I don't know what list they are playing with. So, not a lot of energies. I don't see any basic energies. So, if your opponent plays Dueldon, you need Path to the Peak, right? I suppose that's why Mew, Mew VMAX requires Path to the Peak. Because you're playing Elisa for your uh, special energy, you're playing double turbo. You actually need Path against Dueldon. You have no choice. Um, but that card actually shuts down, shuts off your Genesect from uh, allowing you to draw cards. So make sure you play that Stadium at the last minute, just before attacking, because otherwise you can't attack, you can't draw cards with your Fusion Strike system. Genesect's ability doesn't work. So they actually retreated to the Genesect, that means they need a switch. We're gonna buy some time. Fingers crossed they don't get their switch card out. They just need one energy though for the retreat as well. So if they don't play a lot of energies in their deck, it's going to be quite difficult for Genesec to get out of the active spot. We're going to um, gamble on our luck here and assume they don't play enough energy cards in their deck and do our matchless maelstrom as, you know, while we can to collect extra few knockouts. We're not killing anything, but we at least get to pile up enough damage counters for the knockout later on. So if we kill the Oriko Rio, we're going to be able to do a lot more damage with our next Matchless Maelstrom. But I don't think we need another one. We just need to match this twice. And then Swarm the Wound with a Boss Order. So we're going to keep the Drizzel for the last minute. Get a boss uh, for our final knockout. So we just need to target either the Milaweta or the Oriko Rio. I think it's better to kill off the Oriko Rio. Because it's going to block off our reduced damage done by so much. So we're only doing 10 damage to the Meloetta and the Oriko Rio if we do Meshless Maelstrom. Uh, but Inteleon is going to help us collect the knockout on the next turn. If they somehow are not able to retreat, we got another turn to kill off the Oriko Rio. And then the last turn, we just need one more after that to boss the Genesect. Because we actually did 40 damage on Genesect this turn. So 40 means it has 100 damage on it. And 40 again on the next turn. 140, that means... Basculin can definitely kill off the Genesect, right? If they don't switch, I think we have quite a high chance of winning. So quick shoot the Oriko Rio. Matchless Maelstrom. 10 damage, look at that. 10 damage to the Melavera. Oh my goodness. We cannot afford to play another Empoleon. I don't think we have another one. We, I, we may be inside the prize card, the last copy. So, are they able to hit fast enough? If they pass this turn, they are done. They already passed one turn. I mean, they cannot afford to pass another. If they kill us off this turn, we are done, right? I don't think we have a... I don't think we're able to collect three prize cards on the next turn. So if they somehow kill off something on the next turn... We got boss though. If we can boss something uh, on the next turn to deny them that retreat. Because I don't think they're playing that many energies. They are playing switch cards though. They may get it from the deck. Okay, apparently they are not getting the switch. Which is perfect news for us. It's stellar news. <laughs> One more turn is all it takes. We got Drizzle for boss and the final copy of our Basculin for a Genesect knockout. So that's the end. Killing a one prize this turn and then targeting the D card on the bench. For the final three prize winning the game. So we're gonna take out something. I don't know what we're gonna take. 
from the guy. And we don't really need anything. So I suppose we were trying to look at what we have. So it's smarter to take something out though, because they can actually do a Marnie. If they play a Marnie, it's gonna increase the chances of us getting our boss from the top four cards of our deck. So top five cards after uh, you know passing the turn, we can we may actually have a higher chance of drawing out our boss if they do a Marnie. Okay, we're gonna discard something from our hand as well, apparently, to draw out even more cards. Okay, no, no more Pokemon. So, we actually wasted the Ultra Ball, but that's fine. We discarded <laughs> unnecessarily our Pokemon cards. Uh, we destroyed, we finally killed off the Orico Rio, and now we just need to boss the Genesect. I've repeated that so many times, but that is basically our ticket. Our ticket to win the game. We got Tower of Waters, is useless. We got Bird Keeper. If they kill off the Octillery, we can use Baskin. If they don't, we have Bird Keeper. And they just conceded. So we won against Mew Max by... I wouldn't say by luck, but by their decklist, I would say. Their decklist don't play a lot of energies or switch cards. I suppose they had to discard the switch early, playing a Genesect. So you can't actually control what item cards you use when. So you sometimes you are forced to play those items early, like your power tablet or your Ultra Ball. You can't actually choose when to play those item cards because you have to discard them on the go as you play the game, as the game progresses, without you know, without actually having to without being given the choice to keep them in your hand because if you don't, you're not going to be able to draw the right cards into your hand. You can't draw your VMAX, you can't draw enough to do enough to kill fast enough. So that's the bad thing about Genesect. You can draw a lot, but you're forced to discard a lot as well. You're forced to play way too many cards that you may not need to play just yet. You may need to save them for later. You can't actually save your item cards. You can't shuffle back those items without uh, you know the effect of an attack and doing an attack to shuffle back item cards or put it into your hand is gonna waste an entire turn which you cannot afford and you know Smeargle is not really that smart Smeargle you get to put a fusion strike it doesn't allow you to put any other trainer cards as well only a fusion strike trainer card so it's quite bad I would say um, probably a cross switcher cross receiver or Power Tablet, I think those are the only Fusion Strike cards, or Elisa, you can actually put back Elisa as well. Fusion Strike Trainer card. So they are playing a Durant, now we are up against a Durant, all we need to do is Matchless Maelstrom for the win. Um, don't bench anything because they are probably going to do Escape Rope Tornadoes or anything with a Galar Mine and then trap that bench Pokemon on the active. If you have any bench Pokemon at all, they are gonna boss it and then trap it with a Galar mine. There we go, the Galar. The Galar trap. If they play Summoning Horn though, I'm, it's actually smarter if you have a Summoning Horn for your Duran deck. Because you're discarding their deck anyways. They're probably gonna have uh, at least one or two copies of Basic Pokemon on their discard pile. And that means you get to do Summoning Horn to put it onto your opponent's bench and then boss that bench card without energies attached to it to do your Galar Mind Trap and maybe even a Yellhorn to confuse the active. So we're just gonna... Oh, well, we chose not to attach though. They're playing Crushing Hammer, so it's actually smarter to attach the basic energy because Melanie doesn't work for Octillery. So it would have been smarter to attach the basic, but I chose not to for some reason. Um, Crushing Hammer is going to be very very scary for this deck because we actually need 3 energies to pull off Matchless Maelstrom. If they play both the Fan and the Crushing Hammer heads, uh, it's going to cut down our energy down to 0. It's going to reset our energy card and we need 2 more turns to be able to attack unless if they pull more hammers after that. So they got Evolto. Um, to discard our special energies with the Cry of Destruction. 
So that's gonna be super bad. We need to search, we need to save our Rapid Strike energy from the deck. We're gonna save that special energy just in case they discard it. We may play a Marnie so that we actually get to draw out the cards that we need. Uh, the card save, put those, you know, put our Rapid Strike energy at the bottom and save extra copies of, draw out extra copies of that special energy, maybe. There we go, we actually played it. So, one copy is safely at the bottom. Not gonna be discarded that early. We actually drew out another copy as well, look at that. We get to save another tool card. That's great. Now we get to do Meshless Maelstrom. Killing off two Durants at last. Three strikes for two knockouts is not good. Because we're wasting two tur three turns to collect two prizes. Three strikes for three knockouts is not bad. That means we're doing an OHKO every turn, right? Essentially an OHKO every single turn. Against a one prize deck though, we should be doing at least that. So now we're good. We may be able to do three strikes for four prize now. Three strikes for oh, we just need three strikes to draw all the prizes really. All five prize. Right? Two strikes to kill two Durants. The third strike is not gonna kill anything. The fourth strike, sorry, my bad. Uh, two strikes to kill off the Duran, and the third strike is gonna kill off everything. So they confused us, which is horrible. Now we need to search for a Tower of Waters. Let's hope they don't discard. We only have two copies, so it may be discarded already. But we got our. Um, we don't have a Bird Keeper in our hand. No escape rope either. So we have no choice but to search for the tower. Thank God we got two copies left. That's great. We're gonna retreat to... Um, if we do that though, we can't switch, right? I forgot about that. If we retreat, we can't switch. So even if we have an energy, we can't retreat with Mimikyu because we can't do it twice in a row. We can only retreat once in a single turn. But we're gonna do it anyways. We're gonna retreat. Um, we're delayed by one turn. One whole turn, which is super bad. Um, we actually attach to the bench. So if they play um, Galarmine, oh. they could possibly trap our Mimikyu just because they are discarding uh, four cards from our deck and they quite likely could be discarding our Tower of Waters, our second copy. We got one last copy. They didn't get their Galar mine though. They got no supporter cards, no mine. That's great. Um, I don't really care. Durant decks are a bit broken, I would, uh, if you ask me. It's way too broken just because they are playing on your weakness. They are playing on um, all those control cards like Crushing Hammer, Galar mine. And then discarding your resources, like your Switch cards, your Stadium cards. You can't actually do... You're basically screwed if they discard just the right cards from your deck, right? If they do just the right discards, you can't counter that. You can't counter the Galar Mine. The boss or the Galar Mine trap. So it's the most annoying deck in format, I would say. By far the most annoying. Um, excluding Malamar. If you don't count Malamar, Malamar, I think it would be one of the top, uh, what you know, one of the top most annoying decks of the list. Top of the list for the most annoying decks ever. We got our Bird Keeper. We're just gonna, I think it's smarter to retreat now and save the Bird Keeper for later. Um, they're probably gonna have bosses at the ready. So we need three more strikes, which is horrible. Um, we're gonna search for the tool card, maybe? Uh, if we search for something though, it may actually help them deck us out. Because we don't have- we actually have a Marnie in our hand, so Marnie could be helping us put those cards back at the bottom. Um, but it's not helping though, is it? But oh, we are having more cards in our hand though. So if you have more than 5 cards in your hand, Marnie is going to help you uh, replenish your deck. 
you know, it doesn't matter if you keep drawing because Marnie is gonna put everything back and draw only five cards into your hand. So, if you have less cards, less than five though, don't draw if you are about to deck yourself out because Marnie is not gonna help you put cards back. Marnie is actually only good if you have more than five cards. We actually killed everything this turn, finally drawing the last three prize for a, a full sweep full mind sweep killing off everything with one strike our final matchless maelstrom collecting four knockouts five knockouts if i'm not mistaken uh two durans one Uvolatil, uh one dunsparce and one more duran i think so let's go for our next game now we're up against a vaporeon sylveon umbreon my bad espion slash Leafeon deck box guy? What are you playing? Vaporeon? I don't think Vaporeon is too popular. Sylveon is very popular for some reason. I mean, nobody really focuses on the attack too much. They are focusing on the weakness more than the attack and the rapid strike energy, the fluidity of the deck, I suppose. Adding a Sylveon helps you target um, for the psychic weakness. You don't really need to do that much damage at, uh, you know, you just need a couple of different types on your bench to do up to 190 damage to collect the knockout. Because it does 70 base damage plus 30. So that means you just need three different types, I suppose. Three different types on your bench to kill a 320 HP VMAX. Or a Arceus with a big charm. Well, it, oh my bad. <laughs> Arceus is a colorless type, it's not weak to a psychic. So anything, any V cards basic that is weak to a psychic, or a, uh, you know, V max with low HP. Three types is quite easy though, because you got your Octillery, you got your Urshifu, Arsimian, Basculin, so many different types. Uh, Inteleon, right? All you need is Octillery or Inteleon. Uh, possibly Oishifu Blaziken. I don't think Blaziken is that strong anymore. If you are playing Blaziken, might as well play a super tank Blaziken Cheryl deck. Blaziken Zera is not that strong because Menifee is out now, Zero Aura is not doing anything. I may build a Zero Aura deck without Blaziken for my next list. I yeah, No promises, but I may be trying to look into that. Um, for the next few decks. A bit tired now, but I'm just gonna continue. I'm gonna power through. Uh, we got Remory. We got. Okay, we got Mimikyu instead, apparently. We are fighting against a Torterra Leafeon. So they are charging up the Leafeon because Torterra is not able to attack until they got their rare candy. So I think that's quite smart to choose which attacker to use. They could be playing either the VMAX or the V-Star. If they pull out the VMAX, I'm going to be quite disappointed. If they pull out the Galar Mine at the same time, I'm going to be crushed because they can kill off Empoleon with one hit. So I think it's smarter to do Swirling Slice, but we actually chose to do Matchless. Forgetting that it's in the active spot, that means you only get to do 30 damage to the Leafeon, not 60. Um, we haven't evolved Sobble, that means Okay, they got the VMAX, this is bad. So Sobble, uh, Intellion is going to be having a late entrance for this game. We, for some reason, are not able to evolve for the last turn. Didn't get our Incense or Quick Ball. Uh, Ultra Ball, my bad. We did evolve our Octillery though, at least. So we are we are forced to get our Corina. At least we survived one hit. So Grass Knot could have killed us had they got their had they gotten their uh, Galarine on the last turn. Okay, we got a second tool card. We're gonna get Karina's focus, attach the tool card, and then draw. We're gonna attach to Parsimian. Because we don't want to be sacrificing our Basculin. Basculin is not meant to do matchless Maelstrom. Basculin is meant to do its uh, original attack for a VMAX knockout. So make sure you save your Basculin for its, um, you know, for its main attack because that actually is powerful 
enough to kill a VMAX with one hit. Um, with the second strike though, you have to hit it after doing your sorting slice or enough times of your matchless maelstrom prior. So we're getting our Drizz out right now. I'm not sure what to get. So this is a bit tricky. This deck is a bit funny just because you actually sometimes need to do shady dealings for nothing. So shady dealings is not really gonna... It's not really that useful for this list sometimes. Unless if you have like no supporter cards in your hand. But an incense, you can actually shady dealings for a research and then draw out your auxiliary. But in this case and most cases, apparently we only are evolving so that we get to do our Inteleon fast. Um, quick shoot on the next turn. So quick shoot is not enough apparently just because they are doing Max Leaf to heal back down to 100 damage. So they have 100 damage on Leafeon on the next turn. And 120 plus 30 base is not enough to kill it off. So Basculin is definitely not going to be able to collect the knockout on the Leafeon this turn. So might as well do another Matchless Maelstrom. But if we are doing that, we better be smart about it. We're going to retreat to Passimian, but we're just going to put something else as the active first. Just because we do have a Tower of Waters, we have that luxury to choose to you know decide later whether we want to attack with Passimian. So the best bet right now is to quick shoot something. If we can boss, we actually have a boss in our hand, so we're going to boss the Turtwig. Quick shoot the Turtwig, and then kill it off in the active spot with our Matchless Maelstrom, Passimian. And then do 60 damage to the benched uh, Leafeon. That way we don't need to waste our quick shoot on the Leafeon. We're just going to use our quick shoot on the, to uh, the, the Torterra to be, And then kill it off for that extra one prize this turn. Knock out the VMAX on the next turn. We got another Basculin inside the deck, so if they boss kill off the Basculin, we got uh, Octillery to search for it, or even Ultra Ball. Okay, look at that. We get to do 60 damage to the bench, and then if they heal 30, we got Inteleon to snipe 20. That means we got 15 damage counters at least on the next turn, uh, even with Max Leaf. And 15 damage counters is all it takes. 15 is more than enough to kill off the Leafeon. It only has 30, 310 HP. We're doing 180 damage for Swarm the Wound. And it's up to a total of 330 damage. 33 damage counters. Kills off the VMAX. So a Grass Box. A Torterra Grass Box. Very, very weird and interesting, I would say. Because it does special conditions. Tox Breeze. It does Grass Knot, Max Leaf. Max Leaf actually tanks a lot of damage as well. So, greeting cells for your Max Leaf. You actually get to do Max Leaf on your third turn, which is quite interesting. To keep on healing those damage counters. And tank enough damage to buy you a few turns to get your Torterra out. Before you're able to, you know, do high damage with it. But they're playing a box, basically a Grass Box. So, you can actually... Force your opponent to be conservative with their supporter cards. If they discard too many supporters, you can use Trevenant. Uh, Tre Trevenant. Trevenant. I'm not sure how to pronounce that card. Trevenant VMAX does uh, 40x damage for each supporter card in your opponent's discard pile. So missing in the forest does a lot. You can actually knock out your opponent's VMAX with one missing in the forest, one strike. If they have eight supporter cards discarded, if they play a lot of supporter cards like Research to discard their hand, Mustard as well. If they play uh, Ultra Ball to discard their supporters, if they are not conservative, if they are not careful, you can do a knockout quite easily with your Trevenant. So Trevenant is actually a interesting card to add for any of your Grass Box. If you are playing a Grass Box deck, make sure you add that card just to, you know, hit high damage late stage in the game. Because if you can drag the game long enough, Trevenant is going to help you do a OHKO very very easily. I've seen uh, one of the player. I've I've been I've been matched up against one player. Uh, she was quite smart uh, smart enough to play a Blissey with a Trevenant because uh, Blissey before uh, Brilliant Stars actually tanks a lot of damage with your Dance Bars as well. 
So now that Brilliant Stars is out, you actually we actually have Choice Belt for a one-hit knockout to kill off Blissey quite easily. But before Brilliant Stars, Blissey can actually pull out the game, drag the game out for a, a lot of turns, forcing your opponent to discard, play a lot of supporter cards to somehow get round a Blissey knockout. And then by that time, they would be able to kill off your VMAX with one strike, missing in the forest for 360 damage if you have eight supporter cards discarded. So that's the power of Blissey Trevenant. I'm over explaining myself as usual, sorry guys. But we got Arceus on our opponent's field, which is quite weird. We got Arceus with a Grass Pokemon V and Torterra. Um, too many evolutions, I would say. Maybe they have no none of the V-Star. They may have just uh, the basic Arceus. So our best bet is to do Swirling Slice, target the Butterfree, and if they don't evolve, we can actually snipe it on the bench later. So our best bet is a Swirling Slice first, just because they are playing a, a basic V card, they are giving us that 2 price on a Silver Platter. If they don't evolve fast enough, we can target the Butterfree. We don't have any more boss though. We used that the boss just now. Um... So, I'm not sure what the best thing to do is. If we do matchless, we can't kill anything that easily. It's gonna take way too many turns for our matchless to count. So I think the best bet is to Swirling Slice and hope they don't retreat or evolve. They can't attack with anything else, so I don't think they are gonna retreat. They got no Voltage Beat, they got no Gardenia. There's no Gardenia yet. But Gardenia is gonna be such a big... Um, it's gonna be such a big power up for grass decks. Because you get to attack so much easier with your Butterfree, Trevenant, um, Celebi, any of your grass V cards, VMAX grass type, Delmice, oh my goodness. Gardenia for grass Pokemon. Attach two grass energy from your hand. I think only to your bench grass type Pokemon, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why things only attach to your bench, they only attach to your allow attachment to the bench like Marnie's Pride um, a lot of cards really um, Flaffy so we actually won that they conceded because they saw no way out for the Butterfree Butterfree is dying so that's it for them got our last two prize by killing out the Butterfree okay I have to close off um, an audio source so there's like a foreign audio sauce that somehow magically turned itself on for no reason. It's really weird. The internet sometimes have a mind of its own. It's really scary sometimes. Um, so my earphones, I may have actually accidentally pressed on a button or something. I don't think so though, because my hands are like on my lap. I'm not pressing anything. So it's like the internet has a mind of its own. It just switches on an audio source, an audio source. <laughs> I'm too tired, so I can't articulate too well. I'm calling source sauce, like like a tomato sauce. Okay, they are playing a darkness deck, uh, Eternesis with Umbreon. Let's see how well this deck works. Eternatus, they are playing a lot of Crobats, right? So it's actually a plus for us. No Menifee playing Crobats. We don't, we are not, you know, we don't have to watch out for Menifee. But if they are not playing Menifee, important to note that you can actually play no Empoleon. It's better to, we didn't have the Foresight apparently. It's better to attach to your one prize attackers and attach the tool card to your, either your Octillery, Basculin, or Sabo. Anything that is a Rapid Strike Pokemon. one. We do have Mimikyu and Drizal though, so Drizal can't use that tool card. Uh, Mimikyu can't use that tool card obviously, but if you uh, do shady beatings, you can't use it. So make sure you're aware of that. Um, we don't have the foresight just because we thought they are not playing a Eternatus deck. They haven't actually got it out just yet. So Pierre's for an Eternatus, there we go. Um, just because if they don't play Menifee, 
you can actually save yourself a few prizes uh, by hitting Matchless Maelstrom for a, you know, with a Basculin or a Parsimian, anything. Obviously, don't waste your Parsimian though, or your Basculin. I think it's better to attack with either, I don't know, Sable or Octillery. You kind of need everything. You only have two copies of Octillery to spare. If they boss kill off the other one, you're done. So I don't think you get to sacrifice any of the Octillery. Basculin, maybe one of the Basculins, it's fine. I mean, you don't really need too much of it. If you are killing Crobats on the bench, we're killing either the Crobat Umbreon or the Boom Snarl. They act forcing them to evolve everything. If they don't evolve everything fast, um, they are done. Because we get to do uh, 3 V knockouts for 6 prizes. And that's it. If we get 6 prizes fast, they're, they're dead. Okay, we got a Sobble and we got a Rapid Strike Search. We're gonna do Escape Rope not right now. Um, not sure if that's too wise though. Probably gonna switch back to the same, the other Eternatus. They actually got another Eternatus with an energy, uh, thanks to the Power Accelerator. So, probably gonna knock us out the next turn, but let's just, fingers crossed, they don't get enough Pokemon on the bench. Uh, you never know, that can actually happen sometimes. So, let's hope for the best. If Empoleon survives another turn, we can strike the Crobat a second time. If not, we're gonna be delayed by a whole, whole nother turn, which is gonna be bad. Because by then, they will have evolved all... Everything, the Umbreon, the Green Snarl. I don't think they have a VMAX for the Green Snarl. They may have it. Uh, you never know. We actually need four strikes though to kill off the Green Snarl. So three more strikes to kill the Umbreon and Green Snarl. So I don't think it's that easy. Um, it would be easier to kill maybe the Crobat and the Zigzagoon if they don't scoop it up early. Probably gonna scoop it up by then though. So they discarded the research with the Ultra Ball, they made, they made the ridiculous mistake of doing that. Um, giving us a, an extra turn of doing our Matchless Millstrom, so they conceded because they made a fatal mistake. No fatal mistakes allowed if you're playing PTCG because any tiny mistake is going to count to the final result. You can't afford to make a single mistake. That's the name of the game. It's that difficult. It is that difficult. Especially in the standard format because, well, it's very tight. You have a choice belt, star birth, everything to accelerate your gameplay. You cannot afford to pass a turn doing nothing. Or, you know, giving your opponent a, a pass. If you give them a pass, giving them, you know, an extra turn essentially by not doing a knockout you are delaying your game by a lot so here comes Dragapult from Rebel Clash um, with the pesky ability super annoying ability we are not blocking off Dragapult's ability though just because it's not a basic Pokemon so Charizard still gets to use his ability um, Octillery, Drizzle, Shady Dealings, all of those abilities are still uh, available to your opponent just because Empoleon only blocks off basic Pokemon's one prize card's ability. So it's not really that strong, but we're trying to make use of it for the bench barrier destruction to get through Metaphy. That's, that's the main idea of this deck, basically. I think I've seen people play this before. I thought of it, uh, not first, but I thought of it at the same time as as the people who pioneered this deck. They, uh, you know, I thought of it as the same time as them, I, I would say, because I haven't heard of it until after I thought of it. So I thought of it when Mew was first out. Not, not was first out, but when, when uh, Empoleon was first out against Mew. Because Mew Bench Barrier is actually quite annoying and there's nothing that you can do other than to snipe kill it off before you get to use your Urshifu, right? So Mew actually destroys Urshifu completely. That's why Empoleon 
is actually the perfect counter for Mew or your Menifee. But I didn't actually build a deck based off of that, uh, you know, nothing but the scroll and Empoleon just because you don't have Basculin. Now that Basculin is out, it's going to make this deck so much stronger because you have so much more range, you know, you get to hit VMAXs, you get to hit V-Stars. Uh, V-Star was not out then, but we do have Tag Team, which is kind of the same thing, but you uh, draw much more prize cards, obviously. Isn't it ridiculous that Tag Team is the same as a V-Star, right? It's the same as a V-Star, but it's a basic though. So I suppose that's the difference. That is the difference. Uh, you, you have to go through the hassle of evolving to be able to use your extra V-Star power. You have to wait an extra turn to evolve your Pokemon to get the high HP. Whereas with your attack team, it's, you just need to summon it, right? Then you get the super high HP and the GX attack. Um, but you have to waste that extra price, right? The extra convenience comes with a cost. And that one price card cost is way too much. The, the cost is way too high. I don't think anyone would want to pay for that cost unless the GX attack is strong enough. But it's actually powerful before those VMAXs came out. I mean, VMAXs are actually quite strong against tag teams, I would say. V-Star, I'm not sure if V-Star can beat v GXs. Probably because, you know, the price card count. So uh, we killed off a Drake Cloak. Now they got another copy. They actually benched another V card, giving us that extra snipe. I think that's like the most silly thing to be doing. You should not be benching any more Vs. You should be attacking with nothing but Dragapult. They got their first one out. Okay, we have to flip coins even if we are hitting it on the bench. So the funny thing about the uh, bench attack though is that they actually either you know defend or attack it. They either uh, take the damage or block the damage first before they show the coin flip for that ability if you hit the bench. Whereas if you hit it in the active spot, they have to flip the coin first. So it's a bit weird. I actually prefer to see the result before <laughs> before looking at the coin flip because it's super annoying if you flip like a tails you have like ah oh, a tails are you kidding me but if you don't flip the coins you don't really have the time to react <laughs> and I prefer it that way because your brain is like you don't get the you don't get depressed if you get a tails because you already know before the coin flip And we actually got a head. Look at that. Uh, we got a tail. Our opponent got a tail. So they don't actually get to block the damage. So Dragapult got 30 damage on it. It's not a lot though. So <laughs> I don't think we can kill it off with Matchless. Our best bet right now is to kill both the V cards and uh, the Drake Cloak, maybe. Or even Swirling Slice the Active and boss it later. So they got a heal card. They got nothing else in your hand, which is great. Let's hope we get to kill the Drake Cloak. If they evolve, so they are compressing the deck with War of the Sword. That's actually quite smart. They have they can't actually do anything else though. So attaching the energy removes that one copy from the deck. That means they are more likely to draw the supporter or the evolution. If they evolve the second Dragapult, it's gonna be quite bad for us. We actually need two more turns to kill out the Drake Cloak. Um, two more turns. One more turn after this to kill the Drake Cloak, and two more turns to kill both the V cards on the bench. But apparently they are not doing much. They don't. They are not attacking. They they don't get their switch cards. It's a bit weird. I mean they are playing a stage two and a lot of V cards, but I don't think. It's smart to play Necrozma with your Zashin if you're playing Dragapult at the same time. I think it's kind of all over the place. You only have the space for so many cards. Maybe they're playing only one copy though. I mean, it's not too bad if you have one copy. But 
Dragapult with Zacian is not bad. I would say he's actually pretty smart. They're benching two Zacians though, which makes no sense, right? I mean, why would you need a second copy? It's a bit weird. I mean, I don't think they are thinking too much. Okay. They actually flip all tails though. So we got like 60 damage on 90, if I'm not mistaken, on the Dragapult already. I can't really see. My, my eyesight is not that good. Is it 90 or 60? I don't know. <laughs> so they finally tried to attack with uh, Zashin a bit too late. Now we got our final knockout for Price with Matchless Maelstrom. Parsimian doing 60 damage to the bench. Up to 240 for 4 strikes. Okay, we won Zashin Dragapult. Got a battle styles pack. Super, super. And we're up against Jabali. Jabali. Quite a cool name, isn't it? Jabali. <laughs> Funny name, but pretty cool. Okay, we got first. We got a, you know, we won the coin flip and we got to go first. And we even got a VIP pass. Look at that. That's great. It's always safer to attach your basic energy first. Always prepare for fan of waves, but sometimes I may be gambling. I may play the gamble of attaching the special energy. Just because if you don't get your auxiliary fast, you only have two incense, two copies of the evolution, and two ultra ball. So if you play like three copies of your evolution with four item cards to summon, then it's easy to evolve it obviously but we only have two copies of our evolution so it may be quite difficult to pull out your auxiliary uh, so sometimes it's better just to risk it by attaching a special energy early because they can quite easily do a marty and if they marty you you're gonna have to pull out your stage one to search for the special energy we do have our drizzle though to get you know, if we get Drizzle instead of our Remory, my bad. If we get Drizzle instead of uh, Incense or Auxiliary, we can actually search for, you know, we can evolve our Remory. We can, you know, reverse evolve it with a Drizzle. Okay, they did Tool Jammer, so no Matchless Millstrom. They didn't bench anything anyway, so no, no biggie. We're gonna play Research just because apparently they got a bad hand. They're playing a Pierre's. We're not gonna give them a good hand with the Marnie. So Swirling Slice for the first strike. Tool Jammer is gonna be quite bad because um, our main selling point for this deck is that Tool card on Matchless Maelstrom. Crobat VMAX, okay. So we may need 3 strikes to kill it off. Or like two strikes with a couple of uh, snipes. Two strikes with a matchless maelstrom. Let's hope they don't tool jammer the other one. Another tool jammer. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Double tool jammer. So I think we may actually need to play um, tool scrapper for this deck. Tool scrapper is going to help us remove that um, pesky tool card to help us use our matchless maelstrom. Because otherwise, we are not able to use that attack. So we did a boss for a second Swirling Slice on the VMAX. Trying to kill it off um, later on. So no Drizzile. Always be thinking of getting a Drizzile. Um, because Quick Shoot is going to help you a lot if you pull it out fast. I keep repeating that because it's super important. Um, I cannot stress it enough because... Quick shoot is broken, especially if you get it early. Okay, now we just need to quick shoot it twice, or like quick shoot it once with one matchless maelstrom. But I don't think we have access to that attack at all, because they are pr probably going to attack with either Crobat or Garboder. Uh, we can escape rope, but they're probably going to put one or the other as the active, denying us the bench snipe. So instead of mana fee, they got tool jammer, which is horrible. We can't get through that tool card apparently. 
unless if we have the scrapper but we are not playing any copies in this deck no scrapper you can put it if you want to um, I recommend you guys to experiment for yourself always test things out don't take my word for it test it out for yourself and see if it's strong I prefer not to have any of the tool card maybe one copy I don't know I may try one copy later on but I think this is not too bad I don't think a lot of decks have tool jammers leafy on vmax I don't think it has that anymore I think it still needs it though um, I don't think a lot of people play leafy on vmax anymore uh, with the muck I don't think it's that popular it still needs the tool jammer against the uh, air balloon right because even with galar mine air balloon still gets to reduce the retreat cost by two and you're doing so much less damage without the tool jammer so snow leaf badge and tool jammer is essential for a leafion v max deck not a leafion v star deck so now that the v star is out i think people are playing the dual leafion double leafion the v star and the v max on the same deck with the peony and rillaboom very famous deck which is actually quite strong if you ask me rillaboom is quite crazy right peony rillaboom for <laughs> that voltage v rare candy insanity turf field rare candy um frigatune or rose tower we even got empoleon to draw cards now so you can actually do peony empoleon um the the brilliant stars empoleon emergency surfacing to draw three cards in your hand but you only get to do it once though uh not once but a couple of times just because you have to bench that card so each time you bench it, you're gonna waste, you know, you're gonna eat up those bench positions, fill up those bench spots, um, eating up that space for extra cards. You can't actually bench anything else. So wasting that spot for three cards may not be a good thing, right? Because you only get to do it once. It's, it only has one attack as well. One attack, a uh, water arrow, which does... 60 damage to any one of your opponent's Pokemon for one water energy. Not bad, but if they play Manaphy, you can't actually hit the bench. So, quite bad <laughs> for stage 2. But you get to summon it from the discard pile though. So it's not actually a stage 2, is it? One energy 60 is not bad. If if you're up against like a one price deck, a uh, level ball card or a mat party deck, it's not bad. Okay, I think this is the second last game. So we have one final game after this one. Uh, they are playing Garboder, so they actually get to attach a second tool card. Okay, we get to kill it off right now. No Basculin though, we actually have no Basculin. Oh, okay, we all right. We targeted the Crobat on the bench. And then, yeah, I think that's the smartest way. Sorry guys, I'm actually recording this. Um, I'm rec recording the audio after the gameplay, so I'm a bit confused. <laughs> um, I forgot what choices I made while I was playing the game. So sniping the bench actually means we get to collect the knockout the next turn and kill for six prize by doing a quick shoot on a crowbat and then swirling slice on the active if they don't pull out the second one fast enough, I don't think it's possible because they haven't even evolved it yet. So it's already too late. Mel Odor, they are done. We just need to Swirling Slice, Quick Shoot, and we drew six prize cards in a single turn, killing two VMAXs with Empoleon Inteleon. We don't even need that Matchless Maelstrom, look at that. I think it's because they did it too late. They did everything too late. Um, they got nothing but a Crobat as their first active, so I suppose that's why. A super bad hand spells disaster. Uh, especially if your opponent chooses not to Marnie. If they play, if they know you have a bad hand and they, if they choose not to play a Marnie, if they can afford not to, then you're screwed. Because sometimes your opponent can be stuck with a bad hand as well, or like a average hand, and if they want 
if they want to draw more cards, if they want like um, a better upgrade to their hand, they may have no other supporter cards but Marnie to play. And if they play that Marnie, they're gonna save your hand, giving you like the best possible options, probably because Marnie either gives you a horrible hand early on in the game you can play that card or a hand that you can do anything with marnie is the killer card the killer card of the format i think it's going to be rotated out on the next uh, on the next you know the next rotation is going to be pushed out so thank god for that no more marnie but there's going to be roxanne though roxanne which is equally as disruptive except you only get to play that card if your opponent has like 3 or 2 price cards remaining I'm not sure I think 3 price cards remaining so it's you, it's a late stage card you only get to pull out you only get to use that supporter um, you know late stage in the game if you draw it early you're not going to be able to play it at all a bit more tricky to play than your Marnie so a bit less disruptive, just a lot more disruptive, but uh, you don't get to play that early though. So I would say it's actually better just because, you know, you don't get crushed early. You don't get, you know, turn one Marnie is horrible, right? Everyone knows that. Turn turn one Marnie, if, you go se if your opponent goes second, you get Marnie on your first turn, your opponent's first turn, is horrible. It's just impossible to get around that. So that's why you actually need so so many supporter cards inside your deck just to counter that one Marnie card. If Marnie isn't allowed in the standard format anymore, if Marnie is kicked out from uh, on the next set, sorry, on the next rotation, then I don't think we need that many supporter cards. We don't actually need that many supporter in our deck anymore. Just because, you know, we don't need to counter Marnie. <laughs> it's that bad. Marnie is that bad. bad for both players i would say because if your opponent do it and if you are, if they are lucky enough they can actually destroy you if you are lucky enough you can destroy them with that one supporter and it's like early you know if you do it fast and you know you can just win the game on turn two with a marnie because your opponent is going to concede if they don't get anything and uh, out fast enough if they don't bench if they get a bad setup as well with that marnie I mean, if you go first, and if your opponent plays a Marnie, you can't do anything about it, right? It's just impossible. If you don't get a VIP, if you don't get your basic summons, your VIP pass, your quick ball, if you don't set up on your first turn, going first as well, it's gonna be super, super horrible. Getting Marnie after that. Unless if you have a consistent enough deck. I mean, if you, if you have enough item cards or you know, Poke Gear or anything to abilities as well to get your system running to draw the right cards. I don't think it's that bad, right? So it really comes down to consistency. But if Marnie is no longer available, it's gonna give you so much more breathing space to help your deck succeed. You're allowed to play so much more different combos. Because you don't need to be restricted to focus on consistency, right? You don't need to focus on, oh, I need to add enough item cards. I need to add enough cards to be able to draw. I need to save myself from that Marnie. You don't need to worry about that. That's ridiculous. We do have Judge though. Judge is less disruptive, I would say. Judge actually allows you to shuffle back your hand into the deck and draw a random four cards, which would be better than Marnie, I would say. Because Marty puts everything at the bottom, it's ridiculous, it's horrible. First turn, can you believe that? If you draw if you play nothing from your hand, if you put nothing but a basic Pokemon and an energy on your first turn, you got five or six cards left. Five or six cards left in your hand, all put at the bottom. Anyways, let's just focus on this game. I'm talking too much about Marnie. I really hate her, like she's she's the worst bitch ever. I'm sorry, but she's she has destroyed my life for so many games. I hate her so much. She's a bitch. So this list is a bit different. Uh, we actually have I put this one as as the last game just because we have 
an early list for this uh, version. So this is one of the earliest game for our Empoleon deck. Uh, when I first built this, I wanted to play Mustard and Inteleon, the VMAX Inteleon for the Bench Knight for extra damage counters. So it actually does two damage counters on two of your opponent's bench Pokemon if you discard an energy from your hand, a, a water energy from your hand. So that VMAX actually helps you uh, place extra damage counters on your bench and then it helps you collect the knockout much more easier with your Basculin if you are able to play that card. But we actually have no basic Inteleon, no basic V Inteleons to evolve that card. So we're trying to reverse summon that card with our Mustard. And we're playing three copies of Mustard for this list. Um, to summon that Inteleon, which is a bit ridiculous because we have to do so much more things, uh, you know, so much of the other things at the same time. So I don't think playing that Mustard is that, is that smart. We don't have that many uh, Ultra Balls, that many way of discarding our hand. No Meowth. Uh, we do have three Ultra Balls for this list. No Aurora Energy, no space for that. We need Rapid Strike and Water, that's it. We can't afford to play Aurora. So just because we don't have enough discarding cards, I don't think it's smart to play Mustard for this deck. Maybe one copy of Mustard and one copy of the VMAX, but if you're playing only one copy, you might as well not have it at all, right? Uh, maybe one copy of Mustard for your Octillery, just in case they kill it on the bench with a boss or something. If they somehow uh, knock out your Octillery, you can actually summon your Mustard. Sorry, you can actually play your Mustard on the next turn. Instead of evolving another Remorade, you can bring the Octillery back from life. Back to life with a single supporter card. Okay, so Raiding Slice, kill off the Obstagoon before they can do 150. You can actually do a lot now that they have done Poison. Now that they have uh, piled up enough damage counters, they just need one damage counter on our V card to do 150. With the Choice Belt, is going to kill us with one hit. Probably. 230, yep, that's definitely enough. Okay, now we're up against... Um, 20, I think? 190 plus 30, 2020, 20, my bad. So now we're up against a uh, Savalai, they're gonna kill us with Crazy Claw. Uh, we're gonna kill them back. We're gonna counter the Crazy Claw Savalai with the second Swirling Slice. We did our Matchless Maelstrom, that means we can kill it off with one strike. Uh, we can even attack with Basculin, because they have 90 damage. So we made a mistake just now, we actually did Matchless Maelstrom forgetting that Weezing is in the active spot. If Weezing is uh, active, that means we actually are not able to do 30 extra damage. We are not able to hit 60 damage on the Crobat. Uh, if they play V cards on the bench, Parsimian has no ability. That means, uh, you know, Empoleon is only doing 30 damage to all of your opponent's Pokemon. I forgot about that Weezing's ability. Um, it's a bit tricky because Weezing shuts down all the abilities and... Sometimes it's actually quite difficult to calculate because your brain is like, oh, this never happens. This never happens, so I don't think... You never think about it until it actually, you know, you actually go through it. It's, it's quite... You need a lot of IQ to be able to, uh, cons you know... My IQ is not that high, but it's good enough, I would say. To be able to think about something before you actually face it, right? So that's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Have a great day and bye for now, lovely people. Enjoy your life.